heard about what Sony's plans for Spider-Man was. Uh, back in the days where Andrew Garfield was still going to be Spider-Man, they started talking about, hey, you know, we're looking at DC. They're starting up their own universe. We look over at Marvel. They have their own universe. Why not have a Spider-Man universe? Because there, there is a pretty there's a plethora of characters that you can explore on the Spider-Man side of things. So they came out and said, the way we're going to kickstart it is we're going to have a Venom movie. We're going to have a Sinister Six movie. And uh, the rumors were we were going to have some sort of Spider-Gwen movie off of the comics. That was kind of more of a on the fringe. But we were definitely going to get a Venom and Sinister Six along with an amazing Spider-Man 3. Well, do we have a, give him a womp. Bum, bum, ba, da. No, no, not, not with your hand there. So, things kind of fell apart. And actually for the better for us, I'd say. Because you, Sony and Marvel started getting together and say, Hey, we like Spider-Man. He makes money. He's one of the most popular Marvel characters out there. Hey, Marvel Studios. Why don't we do some sort of deal where you get to use the character and pay us for it? So that's what's happening. We are getting a Spider-Man reboot in 2017. We will be sp seeing Spidey, uh, probably just a cameo, but we'll be seeing him in the Civil War movie as well. So they got plans for Spider-Man. Everybody thought after that was announced, hey, they didn't announce anything about Venom or Sinister Six. So the projects were pretty much thought to have been dead. They were going to be just left by the wayside and mm, interesting ideas just never going to come to fruition. Well, recently we've heard rumors that the Venom movie is on. They are going to be doing something with that. Now, it's not quite certain whether it'll take place like Venom. Will he be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, or are they just going to do something separate from them and, you know, parallel but separate? How are they going to do things with Spider-Man if he's supposed to be over on the, you know, Marvel Universe? He ha he's an integral part of the Venom storyline. And that... It's got some. It's raised some questions. So really, all I want to do is have a little bit of a discussion about what we think is going to happen with Venom, where we yeah. think he's going to go. Now, I think the number one question that needs to be answered is which Venom are we going to get? Are we going to get Eddie Brock or are we going to get a Flash Thompson? Both of these guys have prominently played Venom in the comics. I believe Eddie Brock was the first one to play him, and that was the the photographer who was Peter Parker's rival, who always seemed to get beat out by Peter Parker. Then he gets the Venom symbiote and realizes why Peter Parker beats him out every time and kind of goes on revenge against him. Now, the Eddie Brock one was bad for a time, and that's the way he's mostly portrayed in most like comics and, and stuff like that. But Well, I'm sorry, not in comics, in movies and TV shows. But in the comics, he does kind of go to, mm, let's call him an anti-hero. Not on the bad side of the fence, but doesn't always do the right thing to get to the right solution. But you always had a, him have a hatred for Spider-Man. Yeah, he has a... He's the one that has the struggle with the symbiote to make sure that mm -hmm. he stays in line, right? Like So So he's kind of good in that he's, you know... Yeah, sort keeping of. Keeping things somewhat restricted most of the time. He, he, goes, he doesn't go out of his way to make trouble, but when trouble arrives on the scene, he doesn't do the normal superhero thing and try to keep the collateral damage down. No, he just beats up the bad guy and that's about it dudes what does whatever he needs to to get the job done so that's one venom that we can get now the other venom is i'd say a more interesting venom i believe he's a newer venom he's not a new character to the spider-man series flash thompson uh, a lot of people might know him as the high school bully that peter had to deal with for a very long time um he in the comics right now is agent venom and he lost his legs in the iraq war and but when he puts on the symbiote or when he activates the symbiote, it grows his legs back and he kind of is a good guy agent and he uses guns for some reason. Why would like, Venom you know, need guns? He doesn't need guns. But, uh, you know, this one looks cool using the guns. He was so. trained with guns. So he's just like, yeah, I feel comfortable with it. I can use guns. Why not? <laughs> you know, maybe he's got really guns. cool Venom guns. Now, yeah, I'll be honest say. that I hadn't really read any of the Flash Thompson comics. Um, but it, it just begs the question, which Venom would you like to see? Me, myself, personally, I'd rather go with the Eddie Brock version of Venom. I think he's the more established Venom. A little bit more, you can do a little bit more with him. And also, if you're trying to set this outside of the Peter Parker, Spider-Man, kind of, if you, if unless he's going to be an integral part, you know, I'd say Eddie Brock, it works better. Because Flash Thompson is set up as mm -hmm. the bully to Peter Parker in the early days. So, it would be very hard to separate Peter Parker out of the story. Whereas Eddie Brock... 
yeah, the symbiote comes off of Spider-Man when he gets rid of it. But I could see them doing a little thing like, oh, Spider-Man just like showing his back or something and like ripping off the symbiote or something and it falls down and hits Eddie Brock and you can just start the story there. And so you wouldn't really need much of a an intro. I mean, yeah, they could rework it so that the symbiote hits them right when it comes out of space. But I just think the way they're going, it seems like Eddie Brock would probably fit better. Plus, Eddie Brock definitely has the majority of the storylines mm-hmm. involving Venom. So you also have more to draw from there. I would say that Eddie Brock is probably the more, for the most part, the more likely one because he is the more recognized, the more well-known mm-hmm. version. And just just from that, I, I don't see them taking big risks and, and going with something else. Except that Flash kind of makes sense uh, with how they've been setting up um, other arcs. Now, they might... We're talking about probably a, a reboot here, right? So, uh, not another Spider-Man reboot. But, but not a, not doing another Spider-Man origin story. But they're of they're, Venom they're, origins? Dis, they're disconnecting though from um, from the other movies and other storylines. Possibly, we we don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe it's again, it, these are rumors and speculation. But it, it's, yeah, um, I just think it would be easier to separate Eddie Brock out from mm-hmm. Peter Parker and Spider-Man than it would be to separate Flash Thompson out. Possibly. Because again, Flash Thompson would have to be... I mean, I, mean, I, I, I guess you could just say... I they want to keep it tied to Spider-Man to some extent, though. But the thing with uh, Flash Thompson is... like I don't know if you've seen the recent-ish uh, Spider-Man cartoons that Marvel has done. I think you, you told me about them. Uh, no, oh, there's like Ultimate Spider-Man and there, there's a few, like that. Um, but but Flash has has featured prominently recently in those and as a uh, a Spider-Man fanboy. Like he's mm-hmm. mean to Peter yeah. Parker, but he's a Spider-Man fanboy. He loves boy, Spider-Man, yeah. Which yeah. would go along with the hey, we can turn this guy into a hero because he likes it easier to, to, to transition and, to that. Yeah, now they could certainly go that way, but they would have to have Spider-Man involved. The they other would have to have Peter yeah. Parker involved. I, I think so, that they're going to either way, to be honest. Um, just because Spider Man's the real draw, that they'll they'll have some kind of tie in there, and and the other contributing factor is the more recent set of Spider Man movies did have Flash already in there, and also had yeah. Flash with the whole "I'm a bully, but I'm also not a terrible guy." That's thing. true. Yeah, there was one part, and I think the first where he goes and he he apologizes, he like hugs him and stuff. Yeah, yeah because he knows that his he, his uncle died, so he yeah. shows that he cares for Peter and all this stuff. So I think that's a good tie-in, unless they just want to totally scrap that. And well, the, unless it went with the well, Agent I Venom one, which would. Yeah. I actually think Agent Venom would be cool seeing a gun wielding Iraq war veteran Flash Thompson now get the symbiote and go out and fight crime that way. It would be interesting for sure. It just people would just look at it and be like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this is not Venom that we know. But at the same time, I think the other reason they might want to just stay away from Eddie Brock is simply because of how bad Spider Man 3 went. And it's been a while. But maybe people are still thinking that because they didn't. Yeah, and you know what? All right. So granted, Topher Grace was a horrible, just absolutely horrendous Venom. I mean, the Venom that they put in that movie was horrible. I actually didn't think Spider-Man 3 was all that bad. There were some horrible moments like the emo dancing mode where he had the symbiote. And there was some. I I agree. It wasn't as bad as as people are making it. It's not like the worst movie ever. It was just bad compared to the previous Spider-Man movies. And they didn't do Venom justice. Well, and the reason they didn't do Venom justice is, I'll, I'll give it to you, be just 100% honest, is, yeah, Topher Grace is skinny, but you didn't have to make Venom skinny. You could have made him the big, hulking Spider-Man, pretty much, that he is when the symbiote goes on him. Eddie Brock is a bigger guy than Peter Parker, yes, but Venom gets huge when he gets put onto Eddie Brock. I mean, he becomes like a Hulk. He, he beefs up, like, triple the size, almost. And they made the Venom this little skinny, little wimp-looking dude in a black suit in, in Spider-Man 3, and it just was like, Yeah, eh. and they didn't exaggerate it enough, like they do sometimes with uh, with Carnage and how he looks creepy sometimes mm-hmm. as a thin thing. Like, he 
Carnage also has bulky versions, but also has yeah. the the skinnier the, version. Yeah. But I want to see I want to see but the Venom with it, the big maybe. large tongue hanging out and like like the face like half of his I face is his mouth with a and... deep voice, not the crappy like ah oh, I'm just a little yeah, I'm, no yeah, yeah. scary. I'm gonna get you, Peter. Ah. He's supposed to be scary. I was supposed to be scared by his voice. I'm supposed to feel like mm-hmm. he's going to eat me. He's supposed to be like slithering and slimy and you know just like a you know a, a creepy voice. Me. Yeah. And and they just that that was part of the problem. So, yeah. So you're right. I mean, I could see them going Flash Thompson. That would be an interesting way to do it, especially if you want to keep uh, Spider-Man involved somehow. But well, I guess only time will tell. Hit us up. Let us know what Venom you'd rather see: Flash Thompson or Eddie Brock. And do you want him to be skinny or bulked up? Like, if you put anything but bulked up, I'll be like, "What are you doing?" I bulked up. Okay, so I always preface these questions, and then I tell you how to answer them. Yay me. But uh, hit us up, let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words From My Face on Twitter, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways to get an older.